the gospel text of today which is taken from the gospel of Luke chapter 4 verses 14 to 22 contains the first proclamation of Jesus in the gospel of Luke. In the gospel of Luke unlike in the gospels of Matthew and Mark where Jesus makes a short pity statement in his proclamation. Here, the proclamation is elaborate. Jesus goes to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he was given the privilege of reading the text in the synagogue. And even as he stands up to read, it is most likely that Jesus himself chose the text because the text he reads is a combination of Isaiah chapter 61 and Isaiah chapter 58. Jesus combines them to communicate his own message to the words of Isaiah. And what is the message which Jesus proclaims? The first is that the spirit of the Lord is upon him. Very clearly, that spirit was received at his baptism where Luke tells us the Holy Spirit came down in bodily form as a dove and rested on Jesus. So what Jesus is saying when he reads the words, the spirit of the Lord is upon me is that it is God who has told him to communicate this message. After the Spirit of the Lord being upon him, Jesus begins to communicate the message. The first part of the message seems to be theoretical because he says he has been sent to preach good news to the poor. The proclamation is a verbal proclamation. The proclamation is a theoretical proclamation. The proclamation is in words. However, he follows it up immediately by the proclamation of liberty to the captives, of sight to the blind, and of freedom to the downtrodden and the oppressed. In other words, his proclamation does not remain at the level of theory. His proclamation does not remain at the level of words, but his is a proclamation which is translated physically into action in the lives of the captives, in the lives of the blind, in the lives of the downtrodden and the oppressed. These are only symbolic of anyone who needs the help of Jesus, of anyone who is poor of anyone who opens his or her heart to the revelation which God makes in Jesus. After he finishes reading the text and proclaiming his manifesto, Jesus sits down and the eyes of all are upon him. The ears are still resonating with the gracious words that flow from his lips and he receives approval of all those who are sitting in the synagogue and listening to him. Two days before we can celebrate the baptism of Jesus, even within this Christmas season, the church is inviting us after we listen to this proclamation of Jesus to ask ourselves, whether we are going to help him and make his words come true in our lives and the lives of others. Is the proclamation of Jesus today also good news to the poor? Will I, in my own little way, proclaim and bring about liberty to the captives, sight to the blind, and joy to the downtrodden and oppressed. How will I do that today?